Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Transport Fever! I certainly hope you're having a wonderful day, because I am certainly excited to be back here in the great American Plains, where things are going sort of okay, basically. Um... Things are going alright. At the time of recording this video, I just want to throw out that I haven't seen any comments on part 2 yet, because part 2 hasn't been released yet. So, a lot of what I'm doing is still based on just what I want to do, and also a little bit of feedback from the first part of this series. And an important comment on part 1 has stuck with me for a little while. It's a comment that I didn't see until I got done recording part 2, and it comes back to something we did in that first episode, which was we set up a production line for lumber. We took wood to a, a plant to turn it into planks. We turned the planks into tools. We took those to Chicago, etc., etc. Now, the problem with that is that I made a pretty critical error. Because what I did was I had wood from here in Elgin going to the sawmill in Santa Rosa going all the way over to the machine factory in Grand Prairie, up to Chicago, where it was distributed. Or distributed, whatever way you want to put it. Uh, now, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, just zoom like this for a second. Alright? Look at your screen closely. Can you tell me what the problem was with that production line? Let me tell you what the problem was. I went from here, to here, all the way to that machine factory, to Chicago. I'd like to point out, I could have went from here, to here, to here, to Chicago. And that would have worked even better, because uh, for some reason, I did not see the Salt Lake City machine factory. I don't know why, I just didn't see it, and that, that annoys me. That annoys me a lot, because I should have seen it. All, another thing to point out as well is um, part one, for some reason, didn't record the the mouse on the screen. You weren't able to see my cursor. I didn't notice if it recorded in part two, uh, but if it isn't there on screen at the moment, I don't actually know why. That seems really weird to me because it is there and I have everything set up to record the cursor. So whatever. The point is... Uh, I, I should have just gone from this, you know, Elgin Forest to Santa Rosa Sawmill to there to Chicago. I don't know why I didn't do that. I don't know why I didn't see that, but whatever. Uh, there's no point dwelling in the past. What I'd like to do today is actually kind of simple. I'd like to start turning a bit more of a profit because at the moment we're not. At the moment we're losing a lot. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is uh, this this right here is carrying 18 people currently. That's going to be a lot of money when it drops them off. Unfortunately, there's only like three people stood here right now who are interested in going back to Santa Rosa. What I'm thinking of doing, though, is going to the, the train there and getting rid of the second carriage. Now, one carriage can carry 14 people, so at the minute we filled one carriage and we've... Um, not filled a second. But I mean, that's going to bring us 127,000, which admittedly is still not a profit. But what I think I'm going to do to this train before I decide to get rid of the second carriage is I'll go into settings for a second on this line. And what I'll do is say that in both places, I need you to fill any of the carriages. So it has, it's going to need to have at least... Oh, that might be 28 people. I'm because I think the fill any is going to be fill any type of any type of thing. So fill all the passenger space up or fill all the cargo space of this type up. So passengers, if you think of them like a type of cargo, say a train was carting passengers, coal and lumber. If any one of those things filled up, then I think it would move. Um, I guess we'll see. But the reason I've set it up to you know, only go when any one thing is full is because it will cost a lot less to run when it's not moving. 
So we might see a situation where we start making money off of the train because of that. I don't know if that's the case. It is also nice to see a lot of people wanting to get onto the Chicago loop there coming out of the train station. Uh, there's also a decent number of people that want to go to Lafayette, a decent number of people wanting to go to Elgin and Grand Prairie. So I might very well go ahead and... Uh... Oh, wow, there's actually quite a decent number of people there. 13 currently. Is the train... Train's still on its way in. I actually want to see if... Um... I want to see if this thing will go when it has 14 people on board. I'm actually very, very curious to see if 14's the number or if it would need to be uh, 28. I guess we'll find out here. You've dropped a couple of people off. Actually, four people off. That's fine. So the train's going to pull in. 19.5k. It's currently waiting. Oh, it does need to be full, doesn't it? I mean, that's that's kind of okay. But it does cost 7.8 thousand to run now. Good Lord. Uh, maybe what we'll do is just let it let it do its thing. Maybe that's what we're going to need to do here. Otherwise, it is just going to be... It's just going to be sat there for quite a while. 16 people is not bad, though. And then at the other end, we have... Five. Five people is not good either. But, you know, it'll it'll do the job. I also love this building. That's a really beautiful building. Really nicely detailed for a game like this as well. I've noticed that's that's a thing that's happening a lot with this kind of game these days. I think it sort of started around the SimCity 2013 thing uh, where all the buildings are really, really nicely detailed with some pretty good textures. I remember all the older management games kind of like this where the buildings would look like garbage if you got close. It's nice to see that's not the case. Uh, I am thinking, though, it might be time to go ahead and get another bus or two on the Elgin lines. Are we still making money from those? We are. So the Grand Prairie line, not so much. But I feel like what I want to try and do is spend the money to bring the Elgin line down to 120 seconds. Get the Lafayette line down to less than 100. Basically, everything, the frequency needs to be about 120 seconds for all of them. The train line, not so much. That's not going to be possible. But I think what I want to do is... You know, buy a road vehicle. We'll get ourselves a horse carriage. We'll get two of them, right? We'll throw those onto the Elgin line. That's still three minutes. We'll get another couple on the Elgin line. 138. Two more Elgin. 118. Okay. So that line's quite expensive currently. But we're going to see how that goes. I'm going to do the same with the Grand Prairie Lines. I'm going to buy one, two, three, four, five, six of those and put them on the Grand Prairie Line, bringing that down to 134. We'll buy two more, put them on the Grand Prairie Line, uh, 117. So the frequency of those lines is not much greater, which means in theory, we can move a lot more people a lot faster. And we've also just unlocked a new type of tram and a new type of train. The trains are good and all, but I just don't think I'm too interested in those at the moment. That's currently carrying 12 people, which is not bad. Is that making a profit? Yeah, it's getting there. Definitely getting there. Uh, it is worth keeping in mind, these upgraded lines, now that they have a lot more vehicles, they will cost a lot of money currently. But in theory, we should see some profit come out of that eventually. Obviously, that was a lot of money to spend on new vehicles. Hopefully this year, 1871, we might see a profit. It's a possibility. I am sort of feeling like we maybe got too many uh, buses for those lines, but we'll see what happens. It should be fine. I mean, we're losing, what, 10K on this line currently? 31K on this one? I reckon the Grand Prairie one will be fine, though. It'll bounce back eventually. There's a couple of people waiting down here. There's what? 21 people? That's, that's not bad. That's, you know, five buses full. So that should do the job. It's almost six buses full. All, yeah, almost. That's going to need six buses to move all those people. That's fine by me. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, another thing worth noting, though, is that I'm just... I've been looking around this map a little bit, and I've noticed that there's actually a, a few things in really convenient locations. So in this particular side of the map, we have a farm over here, right? Durham Farm. Next to that is a place where we can take some of the grain and turn it into plastics. And then again, right there. And then again, right there. There's three places where we can produce plastics here. And what we can also do is turn plastics and wood into products, which is actually something we're going to need for our cities. So that's definitely a thing I want to do. So 
if we get this lumber mill set up again going down here, we can take, you know, grain from that farm or that farm, turn it into plastics, and then bring it all to one location and say, hey, here's goods for Chicago or Lafayette. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was an interesting thing. We can also take some... Uh, actually, what I would probably do is take it from here in Durham, turn that into plastics, take the stuff from uh, this farm, take it down to Santa Rosa, and turn it into food. So we have two productions that can go on here that start at farms that are very, very different, and I like the idea of that. I think that could be a really good thing to do. I'm also noticing Elgin's quite busy down here. Uh, how are we looking with these lines? So, the Grand Prairie line, again, losing quite a bit of money. The Elgin line currently losing money, but I reckon when it gets moving, it should be fine. I have seen a lot of people saying that, um, the way to go with this game is absolutely trains from the beginning. I don't know how true that actually is. I, I don't know how accurate that is. Because trains are super expensive. So unless you're taking out a considerable loan, I, I just I just don't know. Uh, now, the American horse cart is a goods vehicle. So I don't know how useful that's going to be for us. Have we got anyone coming in here for the train? Come on. There we go. There's a couple of people going for the train. Beautiful. That's going to bring us up to 17 people for the train today. Not bad. That's uh, not going to be 18. I thought you were going to go for the train, but apparently not. So yeah, 17 people for the train is not bad at all. I do kind of like the idea of getting more people in the Chicago loop, but I, I don't know how popular that line is, so... I don't know if I'll bother with that. It is worth noting, though, the train line is just a... It is just a money sink. It really, really doesn't make... It makes money, but it... I mean, it literally doesn't, actually. I don't know why I'm saying it makes money. It doesn't make money. It gets a lot in one go, like 17 people to Santa Rosa is going to be so much money. Uh, a lot of people coming from Santa Rosa, you know, three of them, maybe not then. You know, I, the trains can make a lot of money, they just kind of don't, basically. That's kind of the gist of it. Uh, 5.38k for every person that comes from somewhere like Elgin or something is not bad, though. The Elgin line's back to making money. Uh, hopefully the Grand Prairie line can get back to making money. I'd really like to see that be a thing. I'm also somewhat aware of the fact I could totally throw one more bus line in here, I think. Yeah, I could throw one more bus line in here if I really wanted to. That would, um... Get us people going. We could, we could get a bus line that goes to Durham if we really wanted to. The only thing is, that's such a long distance that I feel like it would make more sense to do Grand Prairie to Durham. And then they can transfer in Grand Prairie to get to Chicago and then anywhere else if they wanted to. I feel like that is a thing we could do. I've also seen a lot of feedback regarding my general method for doing uh, buses like this. A lot of people saying that, you know, it makes more sense to just let them go wherever they want to go. So if you want to go from Elgin to Santa Rosa direct, you should be able to do that. Elgin to Grand Prairie, you should be able to do that. I mean, yes, you should, but in terms of me making a profit, th this makes more sense, basically. Uh, speaking of profits, good lord, that's expensive. Like, super expensive. Uh, it is currently heading for Santa Rosa. Currently 17 people on board. There's 10 people in here, which is not bad. So 17 people is going to be... How much? 110k. Not bad. I feel like it's getting there. I feel like a, another year or two of running that train and it'll pick up a little bit. Hopefully. We'll, we'll certainly see. Uh, if we look at our profits, though, I mean... Running costs are still really, really high. And a large chunk of that is the railroad. I feel like if we got rid of the railroad... Actually, no, to be fair, the railroad's making us... Yeah, that's a tricky one. That's a real... So the railroad makes 139k and costs 160. The roads make 205 and cost 114. Interesting. Loan interest is 150,000 as well, which is fair enough. Um, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the best way to make it. I'm going to repay some of my loan here and see if we bring that back down to like 2 million, let's say 1.5 million ish. That might, oh, we replaced a vehicle. Oh dear. Uh, that might very well let us make 
I don't know. Is the loan interest always 150? It might be. I don't know. I'm just a little bit hopeful we can start making some good money here because we're really not. It's it's really becoming an issue. The train is coming in with a decent number of people. There's nine people waiting here. There's already 10 people waiting in Santa Rosa. So maybe 1873 will be the year that we turn things around. If not, then I'll just take shed loads more loans and... You, you know what? I'm actually... The more, that, the more that I think about it, the more I'm actually very tempted to take more loans. The more I'm tempted to take some loans to connect up Lafayette, to connect up Miami, to connect up Arlington with a train line and just have a couple of trains going along there or at least a second train that can go between Chicago and Santa Rosa. It's tempting. It is very tempting. Although the train line apparently has made some money, which is honestly astonishing. So I don't I really, really don't know. I really don't know what the right uh, the right thing to do here is. I mean, this thing's got what, 14 people waiting. That's not bad. There's um, there's actually nine people waiting there at Elm Street. I'm wondering, should we maybe add what well, we've got two buses going around Santa Rosa? Let's get another one or two. Let's go for two more and set them on the Santa Rosa loop. Because I have a feeling a couple more of those might, might make the train a little more popular. So that's going to be 18 people there waiting for the train. And that's good. That's a good number of people. We have this coming in there. I don't think that let anyone else off. That's fine. Although I think that's one of the, the new bosses that just got, uh, got added to the fleet down here. But I mean, there's 10 people waiting there. There's, okay, one person waiting there and six waiting up there. So I definitely feel like more buses getting people to the train station is going to be a really good idea. This thing's not costing 13.7k. Eight people on board. That's not terrible. Okay, I'm I'm actually I'm actually curious. I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing whether or not the increased number of bosses in Santa Rosa is going to be a really good uh, good addition to the area. So are you guys going to get off? Yeah, you're all getting off. That's going to bring us up to 22 people if they're there quick enough, which they might not be. Come on, how many people? Uh, 20. Not bad. That's actually the highest number of people we've had on that train thus far. We have two people waiting over here. So how many people are waiting? So 11 for the loop and 17 for the loop and 8 for the loop. I feel like the Chicago loop needs more people. It needs more buses. Well, actually, no, I take that back. It's already got six. So maybe not. Maybe we don't do that. Uh, if we have a look at our money again, though, I mean, 1874 is actually looking a bit better than previous years, and considerably so. You know, by about 50, well, no, there it goes, back to where it was. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe 1874 is not going to be our year. I really want it to be. I just don't think we're going to get that lucky. Uh, five people waiting in Santa Rosa, though. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I think we're going to have to take a loan. I think we're just going to take up to... Oh, can I only take so much? Uh, oh, you can only take up to 10 million. Well, that has changed. Uh, <laughs> that has most certainly changed. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, that is rather odd. So I have a considerable amount to pay uh, on this loan. I think what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to maybe get some production going. I think production might be the way to go here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to do, I'm going to start by bulldozing this right here. So that's going away. What we'll do is we're going to get ourselves a cargo, a, a truck station just over here. All right. We'll go for a large one, just because we can, really. Uh, 26,000 exactly for that. That's fine. So what I want to do is I want to set up a line that goes here to there. And that's fine. So line one is going to be... Uh, car. What was it I did for trucks? Was it T? 
Yeah, because trains are PT and CT. So a truck is T. So truck, that is going to be logs. Or it was, what was it? ELG. It was Elgin log to um, Salt Lake City planks, I guess. So plank, Salt Lake City. So that's fine. Then what we're going to do is we're going to run... Oh, we got the stagecoach. That's nice. Uh, we're going to run this from here to there. And that is going to be uh, another truck one. So Plank, Salt Lake City to Tools, Salt Lake City. And then what we're going to do is another one that goes from there to Distribution in Chicago. And again, that's going to be a truck line, which is going to be tools from Salt Lake City to Chicago. And that's our line. So if we can make that work, which I really hope we can, we're onto a good thing here. Uh, so what we'll do is go up to our... Actually, you know what? Santa Rosa might be the better one to go for for this depot. Uh, so if we go for some road vehicles, uh, the stagecoach number one is actually faster than the horse carriages by a little bit and can carry more passengers. So what I want to do before I do any of this stuff with the uh, cargo things is I want to go to here and replacement and say so you're not going to replace with that. You're going to replace with the stagecoach, which is admittedly more expensive, but that's fine. And then I, I want to make them yellow as well. So the Chicago Loop is going to have yellow stagecoaches. The Chicago to Elgin line is going to have um, blue stagecoaches. I'll just make them the same color as the line for now. Actually, you know what? I want them all to be yellow. Because at the minute, they're kind of like taxis more than anything. What do I just... No, stagecoach, yellow. There we go. Uh, the Grand Prairie line, similar story. Stagecoach in yellow. I don't know if we'll actually save the, the color, but we'll find out. Uh, the Lafayette one is a similar story, stagecoach in yellow. I think I mentioned this last episode that this would eventually happen, where I know that we fairly recently replaced the, some horse carriages. Uh, so we're probably not going to see stagecoaches on the road for a while. But when we do, it's going to be a really good thing. So again, stagecoach in yellow. There we go. So those are going to get replaced eventually. As for vehicles on the Elgin line, the, the cargo lines, let's go to here. Let's buy a couple of these. So the first one is going to be just logs. So I'm looking, I'm looking logs right there, logs. So buy me two of those. And I want to set them on the logs to planks line. But no, sell that one. Uh, sell it back. This one is going to be planks, which are there. Buy me one of those. No, two of those. Set them on the planks line. And this one is going to be tools. And set them on the... Actually, let me let me sell those for a second. Just until we actually, we actually have some planks made. So there we go. We have some wagons going out. Eventually, we may see some new vehicles on the roads. That would be nice. Uh, you're currently carrying 13 people. That's fine. Are we making money yet? I highly doubt it. Yeah, considering we have these cargo lines at this point, I really don't see us making a profit anytime soon. I might bankrupt this company. It's entirely possible. It wouldn't be the first time. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm really concerned. <laughs> I'm really concerned that we might um, we might bankrupt this company. Uh, I don't want to. Don't get me wrong. That's not my goal. I just I'm a little rusty when it comes to transport fever. I'm a little little bit rusty. But don't worry. If if you know in an episode or two I bankrupt this company, what I'll do is I'll practice a little bit and we'll start up another series right away because I know a lot of people have been asking for this game and I don't want my incompetence to be the reason that we only get like five episodes or something. I don't think that'll be the case. Um, I'm just concerned is, is basically the gist of it. I am a little concerned that, you know, things aren't exactly going the way I, I, I want them to. Uh, so you're going to make what? 
91. That's not bad. That's actually not a profit yet, but you know, you're trying. So that's fine. Uh, oh, we're losing money in the Santa Rosa loop. We're losing money in the Chicago loop as well, but these ones are starting to get there a little bit. Which is not bad. So I guess I'm hopeful. I'm also noticing that this right here is, um, is packed. 28 people currently waiting for a ride on the Chicago loop line. We really need to get those stagecoaches in here. Can I see the life, uh... The lifespan of some of these vehicles? Eight years. When do you get replaced? What's, what is the... So, what do you, you, you have a lifespan of 15. Ooh. Maybe replace them at 75? On the Chicago Loop? Actually, no, 100% and replace not. Uh, 92.7, yeah, pay that. So, we're gonna replace all of those, basically with the new vehicles. So that means... I mean, that's that's not a stagecoach. I guess we're waiting on those going back to the... Is that a stagecoach? Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, that is beautiful. It's much faster, too. Uh, so we'll get all those replaced. That'll get people moving a little bit quicker. They look beautiful, though. They really do. Look at that. Look at that. I love it. So yeah, that'll get people moving a little bit quicker around Chicago. I might actually go and say that the Elgin line could be replaced as well. It's gonna cost me 204K, let's do it. Replace the Elgin line uh, and the Grand Prairie line as well. And then the rest of them can replace when they need to. So get those replaced. And we'll see. These lines are actually making money as well, which is kind of surprising, so. Yeah, I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing how this all goes. Uh, as for this production line, it looks like these guys down here have picked up uh, a, wee bit of, uh, a wee bit of wood to take over to uh, get turned into planks if you catch my drift. So hopefully we're going to see... Hopefully we're going to see these guys here eventually get some uh, get some, some planks to take up to turn into tools, at which point I can go ahead and get myself a, uh, a couple of wee trucks to take them up to uh, Chicago. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. That might happen. Um, you guys haven't upgraded yet. I assume you're carrying passengers, and that might be why. Or maybe they're the, uh... No, it was the Elgin and... No, it was the Grand... What lines did I just upgrade? Elgin and Grand Prairie. Why not the Lafayette line? That makes money. So does Salt Lake... To be fair, they all make money. It's just expensive to upgrade. I think, though, I think it might be a, a worthwhile investment to replace them all. Just on those main ones. So we'll get those replaced. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money to replace those. But I think it's going to be for the best. I think we'll get more people moving around. I mean, we've got, what, 18 people here already. We're going to go up to 20. So immediately, more people are moving around Chicago. Which is really exciting news. There's two people on this train right now. That's really depressing news. But for the most part, we should be able to see more people moving around. Like, most of the stagecoaches are full these days. Also, look how beautiful Chicago is at the moment. Oh, there's the... Hold on. There's the thumbnail shot. Right there. Thumbnail shot right there. Oh, that is beautiful, man. Hold up. Let me get the camera lined up. There we go. Right. So, let me just F10 that real quick. There we go. So, that... <laughs> That right there, thumbnail shot, absolutely beautiful. This guy here is going to come along, let a couple of people out, pick a couple of people up, I assume, and be on his way. Oh, I love it. I really do. I'm really, really pleased with this. Are those roads, I assume they're medium straights, right? They're not large, but I could upgrade them to large straights. Large straights have a higher speed limit, but I mean, nothing can do 37 right now, so I don't know why I would necessarily want to go with that. It is just a thing I I could do if I wanted to. Uh, I just don't necessarily see me wanting to do that. Oh, we got some planks over here. Beautiful. Um, you know, looking at the amount of log production over here, it might be an idea to get a couple more trucks onto that line. Because uh, we are making money in the log line. So, let me throw a couple more, a couple more trucks onto the log line. Because production's good over that way. So... 
you're going to be doing logs. We're going to get two more of you. We're going to set you on the Elgin logs. I really should do log Elgin rather than Elgin logs. We'll change that in a second. Uh, yeah, we'll change that now, actually. So, log space ELG. Oh, hold on. So, log ELG. There we go. So, that line's been updated. There's now four vehicles on there. Uh, what I will do is go ahead and say that we will get... Uh, one vehicle on the tools line to begin with. And I want to get one more doing planks as well. Actually, no. That's fine. So we've got four vehicles doing the, the logs back and forth. Two doing the planks and then one doing the tools. That should be fine. That should be totally fine. So I'm excited to see this get up and working. I really, I really am excited to see this uh, work. Oh my God, hold on a minute. 24 people currently waiting here for a train. Are we turning this around? Am I am I on the brink of turning this around? Because I feel like I might be. I'm actually kind of excited. I also wish I could like, you know, resize this window because it's kind of small. Uh, oh, what does that do? Does that only sh oh that only shows me lines that I can currently see? Oh, that's a nice feature. All right, I like that. Twenty-seven people. We're about to fill up a train, ladies and gentlemen. We are actually about to fill up a train. Uh, one person waiting there. There's a couple people waiting for a lift in Salt Lake or Santa Rosa. So maybe we should go to Santa Rosa and say, hey, let's replace all your vehicles. They'll be a little bit faster. It's not too expensive to do it. So we'll get those replaced. They're a bit faster. And hopefully that'll get more people going from Santa Rosa. Uh, but the, the train itself is currently carrying five people, not that much. Uh, but hopefully we'll see that make money. I mean, the, the logs to planks line is making money. The planks to tools line hopefully will soon make money. The tools to Chicago line actually has a really bad frequency. So I'm wondering if I was to maybe focus and bring in the frequency of those lines a little more into check with each other. So maybe three, four, five would be a good set of numbers there. Or 333 could work as well. But let's give that a shot. So you're going to be doing planks. So planks, buy one, and set it on the planks line. Brings it to four, which is good. The tools from Salt Lake City to Chicago line is just really slow, actually, like remarkably so. So let's maybe go and say... You know, tools, buy two of them, set them on the tools line. That brings it to eight minutes. That's actually okay. If we can get those all in check, I mean, they're all making money, which is good. We have got some tools lying around up there as well. Uh, are you currently hauling any planks? You are. Five of five. How much money does a set of five planks getting dropped off here actually make us? That's the real question. So if you pull in, you're going to drop off some planks. 9.5k. Not bad, actually. Uh, there's not that many planks lying. Actually, there's a decent number. Lot of logs, though. I'm really happy to see that this production line here is actually working. Lot of logs going back and forth. Quite a few people waiting here as well. 19 currently. Uh, quite a few people waiting here as well. It looks like we're sort of turning this around a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, in terms of money, uh, new vehicles has cost us a lot these last few years. So I don't know if we're going to be able to accurately tell just how much we're making these days until we get into a year where we don't buy vehicles. But I'm feeling pretty good about this. There's a lot of people moving through Chicago at the moment. This train's actually full as well, which is just incredible news. Uh, 19 people waiting in Santa Rosa. That's also incredible news. There's four people on this thing as well, so we might very well see, you know, 23 people getting onto that train. Yeah, there's at least three of them going. So, yeah, I, I do think we're getting to a point where we're starting to turn this around and starting to make money. It's not December 1878. This year, we're looking at um, a pretty substantial loss, if we're honest. Not as much as 76, but a substantial loss nonetheless. Uh, I am wondering what's up with that. So at the beginning of the year, right away, it's minus 180. Admittedly, 150 of that is loan repayments. So 
I don't, I don't quite, I don't know. I mean, running costs in general are pretty high. That's fair enough. But if we, if we can't turn this around, if we can't find a way to start making money, we are up a certain creek without a certain paddle. And that makes me nervous. I'm sort of relying, I think, on the train doing really well. And to be fair, the train does. The train does do very well. The train has, you know, 22 people on it right now. These cargo lines are going to start picking up a little bit, hopefully. Hopefully we'll see a lot. Oh my God, there's 32 people waiting here. So we, in theory, could upgrade that train. If only we had the money, because we don't. We, <laughs> we don't have the money at all to upgrade that train. Uh, I am wondering, though, if we have a look at some of the stats for Chicago, we are actually providing some tools. We're doing 5% of the... There's also, you know, line usage is pretty mediocre. Can I upgrade the Chicago loop a little bit? I want to get a, a, a boss going out that way. I feel like that'd be a good idea. I, th I think we're going to have to try this. So Chicago loop, I want to add another stop. I wish I could move these. Oh, stations will be added after the selected one. Yeah, that's what we want. So after this one, I want to add a stop out there, basically. So what we want to do is go to here and get this. So that's going to go like there, basically. And that's going to go there. So what we want to do is we want to add a stop after Chicago Exchange just there. And then that's going to go into Elm Street. Except what I think would be a better idea is to say that after First Street, it goes to there. And then we remove... Hold on, let me pause for a second while I do this. Um, actually, no. After So after Sixth Street, I want it to go to Chicago Sidings. And then I want it to go from Chicago Sidings to Hickory Street. I know it's on the wrong side, but it'll do. To Hickory Street. Then after Hickory Street, I want it to go to Chicago Transfer. And then to that stop on Elm Street. Then back to the start. So get rid of this, 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 and this. And now that line goes out and around like that, up to there, into there, down, up into there, back out down to here, and then down this way. So it doesn't actually go to this stop in Elm Street. It goes to this one instead. Which I think is fine, because it now goes out and around Chicago. And I like that. So that might mess with people a little bit. They're all going to have to transfer to the other stop on the other side of the road, but... They actually did it immediately, kind of city skyline style right there, so that's fine by me. But I think that's going to be a better Chicago loop, to be honest. That's connecting up more of Chicago, and that's kind of what we needed to do. At least I think that's what we needed to do. It's still not technically making money, but it's not losing that much either. Uh, everything's actually making money as well, which is amazing. Oh my god, we might turn a profit. Like, we're making money on the logs, we're making money on the tools, we're making money on the planks. We're making money on the train, guys! Like, we're actually making money on the train. Good lord. That's impressive. And rather unexpected, to tell you the truth. So what, 28, 22 people there, that's fine. Uh, this is still making planks, not as quickly as I'd like, admittedly. Production's not great there, there's not that many tools lying around, but... For the most part, we are... Providing Chicago with some tools. And that makes me really, really happy. We also turned a tiny little profit last month. Last year, rather. That's good. That is really good that we, met, we have finally turned a small profit. So that makes me wonder, what are we going to do in the year 1880. What's going to happen there? 
because that could be big. I mean, currently there's only six people waiting for the train here and the train is on its way. So I'm kind of hopeful that a lot of people will come out of the train station pretty quickly. I don't know if that will happen, but I'm, I'm certainly hopeful. Uh, I'm also wondering if I should connect up these roads a little bit. That might not be a terrible idea. I don't know. It's it's actually sort of looking like less people are currently traveling, which has me a little bit nervous. I don't know. What's the, what's the money looking like? Yeah, we're still not quite at a profit this year. But we'll see. 1880 is going to be the year that I build absolutely nothing so I can get a good look at whether or not we're actually making money because that's... That's kind of important. I also realize that the getting people to the station is going to be a little bit slower these days because we are sending the, the vehicles out and around a little bit more. So in 1881, it might be an idea to go ahead and get a few more uh, vehicles going around Chicago. They didn't get off. Oh, no. Oh, don't let the train come in to pick up only five people. That's disastrous. Or six people. That's still kind of a disaster. Oh, no one got off of you either, really? That's not good. That's nowhere near enough people. Oh, dear. Uh, there's five people on you as well. Hey, someone got off. Uh, there we go. Thanks, buddy. Oh, you're going for the train? To no, you're not. You're going for the bus. All right, that's, that's not ideal. Uh, that's currently carrying 21 people. That's going to be 148k. It's only carrying six back there, which is a bit of a concern, but we're up to th like near three million there. We're almost at the end of the year too. So I want to see if we've turned a profit this year and by how much. I'm really, really curious, really curious. So January 1st, 1881. Oh, we did it. 83.9K. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave it there for today. Whew, we have turned this profit problem into something. I don't know what that something is yet, but it's something. So with that in mind, thank you, Canada, for watching. This has been Transport Fever Part 3. It's been an absolute pleasure. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.